Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over the top, beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on a, we have slid and slogged our way into Wednesday. What is that? February 10th, 2021. 83 degrees here in this undisclosed swamp. Uh, here on this collapsing planet, I understand that uh, there is some sort of polar vortex uh, gripping the vast majority of this country in a deep freeze. But you might see in front of you the first flush of spring down here in the Sunshine State here. Uh, on February 10th, uh, which is why I am a snowbird. But anyway, I want to thank Pat Anderson for alert <coughs> uh, listener Pat Anderson for sending me this story from the good old Guardian. And uh, of course, this story nowhere mentioned on the uh, mainstream media. And I'm so glad to get this article because I've been wondering about this particular uh, elephant in the room myself. Uh, and we're going to talk about uh, state-owned oil companies or state-owned fossil fuel companies. You know, with all of the talk about uh, getting off of fossil fuels and everything, 99% of uh, the conversation is about the big multinational oil companies, you know, Exxon and Shell and Chevron and all of the rest of those planet eaters, but you never hear about the state-owned oil companies, meaning uh, the, the nationally-owned oil companies, N namely, uh, think Russia, China, India, Mexico, Brazil, uh, that I, I guess somewhere in this article we're going to learn what percentage of the oil being pumped. I think it's 40 percent of the oil being pumped on this planet uh, on this planet is being pumped by these nationally owned oil companies, mostly from nations who whose economies are very dependent upon them pumping more and more fossil fuels. That if fossil fuels disappear uh, off the planet, their economies will collapse. And uh, so do the math. If you're running one of these countries, uh, if you're one of these dictators for life or whatever, and you have some uh, unenforceable BS promise at some UN meeting that you made back in 2015 compared to uh, your day-to-day -day balance sheet uh, that is going to collapse your country's economy and, and put you out of a job, who do you think you're going to vote for? with and this is not mentioned in this story but this thing with Canada is a, is a perfect example you know that little pretty boy uh, hypocrite planet eater up there Justin Trudeau you know acting like how Canada is taking uh, climate change seriously and whatnot and as soon as our save the planet President Biden puts the final kibosh on the Keystone pipeline there's that little crybaby pretty boy up there crying foul. It is a hell of a lot more important to uh, Justin Trudeau uh, to keep that the world's filthiest oil flowing through uh, flowing through that pipeline uh, th than it is meeting the climate. Targets, and so that's just a close cousin. But let's dive into this article uh, and see what the Guardian has to say about this. <clears throat> State-owned fossil fuel firms plan to invest plan to invest 1.9 trillion dollars 
could destroy climate hopes. Climate hopes. Yes, you can throw out the window. Oil projects over the next decade would, or that should be will, destroy any hopes of meeting Paris climate goals. Uh, and, and of course, the Paris climate goals are a joke. Uh, even if we do meet those ridiculous goals, uh, the, the, you know, this climate is toast. Anyway, take it away, Guardian, and explain this to us. <clears throat> the world's state-owned fossil fuel companies are poised to invest about $1.9 trillion in the next decade in projects that would destroy any prospect of meeting the Paris Agreement climate goals. Yes, a large proportion of these investments are likely to become stranded assets with at least $400 billion unlikely to be profitable. And I cannot get into a whole rant about stranded assets. Uh, but if you go on this article and read it yourself, they uh, link you to where, you know, you can get an education. If you don't know what their, this stranded assets argument is all about, um, at least $400 billion unlikely to be profitable if the world sticks to its promises to hold global heating to less than 2 degrees C above pre-industrial levels. According to a report from the Natural Resource Governance Institute think tank. Yes, uh, please. Uh, <laughs> you know, we have the uh, kayakers unloading. I should be out on that kayak today. It is a fine day to be kayaking. All right, oil prices collapsed last year to about $40 during the corona panic and lockdowns, <coughs> but have since recovered some ground to about $60 a barrel now, and many fossil fuel companies are expecting a return to business as usual this year or next and are planning for future expansion meaning future expansion of uh, bringing more and more and more fossil fuels uh, out of the ground uh, as uh, the world gets back to business as usual. David Manley, the lead author of the report and a senior economic analyst, said, quote, <clears throat> A lot of the oil industry wants one last party, and they are going to invest trillions. We are worried about how long that party will continue. If the energy transition away from fossil fuels and into clean energy is to be fast enough to meet the Paris Agreement, the party needs to be over very quickly. Yes, and of course, don't get me going on to a, a whole nother rant ab about even if we did uh, get rid of fossil fuels tomorrow and transition over to the mythical bright green lie of clean energy, we would still be screwed. It is irrelevant to the conversation of the collapse of a planet. Let's just make sure we all understand this, that we all get it. The Paris Climate Agreement is a joke. The transition to clean energy is a joke. Getting off fossil fuels is a joke. Uh, even if we did get off fossil fuels, uh, we would still be screwed. But anyway, now that we all get this, uh, so where was I? 
in the report titled Risky Bet, Risky Bet, the national oil companies in the energy transition, the authors made the dilemma clear. This is quoting from the report. If you go on the link to this story, you can get to the report itself. Quote, either the world does what is necessary to limit global warming, or national oil companies can profit from these investments. Both are not possible. Period. Close quote. National oil companies, otherwise known as NOCs, produce about two-thirds of the world's oil. Good, okay, two-thirds. I was thinking 40 percent. Try 66 percent. National oil companies, okay, meaning not Exxon, uh, Shell, and, and, and all of the usual suspects, although you better believe that these national oil companies are in bed with all the multinationals. Uh, don't, don't think for one minute that these planet eaters don't crawl around in the slime together. Uh, national oil companies, or NOCs, produce about two thirds of the world's oil and gas and own about 90%, 90% of fossil fuel reserves. They, meaning the national oil companies, are rarely scrutinized, however, as their state ownership means they can operate secretively without publishing much detail on their finances or operations as publicly listed oil companies such as Exxon, BP, and Shell must do. <clears throat> While some publicly listed oil companies, including BP and Shell, have bowed to shareholder pressure and vowed to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions and divert at least some of their investments into green technologies, the power of the NOCs is such that they could easily outweigh the emissions cutting efforts of other major players with their own investments. Manley said, quote, we can see some of these NOCs canceling out any progress made by some of the big oil companies, close quote. NOCs are generally accountable only to their own national governments. This, in other, way, in other words, this is the fox guarding the hen house. NOCs are generally accountable only to their own national governments, and often only a handful of top officials within those governments are responsible for decisions on hundreds of billions of dollars in investment. Such officials tend to be responsible for generating revenues from their state-owned fossil fuel assets, but carry little or no responsibility for climate change targets. Exactly. And, uh, this is talking about what do you think they're hired to do? What do you think these planet-eating big guns are hired to do? They are hired to make money for all of these governments, uh, you know, such as Russia, China, India, Brazil, Mexico, Saudi Arabia. Uh, go on and on with it. Uh, it's the economy, stupid. Uh, this is where their loyalty lies. Uh, this is not uh, rocket science. Said Manley, quote, they are, you, you know, these, 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 ex these fossil fuel executives running these shows, they are still holding on to visions of being world-class operators and strutting the global stage with these companies. 
we are worried that they are not seeing the need to reassess their long-term strategies, close quote. Yes, and if you have not gathered this by now, many, I would say every one, of the countries with national oil companies are highly dependent on oil and gas revenues. Meaning without the revenues from oil and gas, their economies will collapse, their societies will collapse, civil war will erupt, Mad Max will erupt, uh, the presidents and dictators or whoever will be out of a job, overthrown, probably assassinated uh, if, the, if they kill the goose that laid the golden egg. Uh, I mean, this is one of the big setups for collapse on every level this century. For anybody who does not know what they're saying here, um, many of these countries with national oil companies are highly dependent on oil and gas revenue. They should be helped to overcome this dependence, according to Manley. Oh, yes. Quote, these countries are often quite poor, and it's not their fault. It is not as easy as saying to BP and Shell that they should shut down, close quote. China, India, and Russia are expected to be responsible for the biggest chunk of investment from NOCs. China has signed up to a long-term goal of net zero emissions by 2060. Don't get me on every, uh, on all of the rants inherent in that sentence. And India has laid out a strong investment plan for renewable energy. Russia has signed up to the Paris Agreement, but has not taken a strong stance in favor of climate action at international talks and has worked behind the scenes to scupper, I love that English word, scupper, some progress at previous talks. Okay, but don't worry. The UN is going to save the planet. In November, in November, what is that, nine months from now, uh, in November, nine months from now, governments will meet for vital, vital UN climate talks known as COP26. COP26. That will provide an opportunity to shine a light on the activities of NOCs and try to persuade the governments that own them, yes, to put in place long-term plans to move out of fossil fuels. Yes, and you probably will hear some long-term plans uh, for these governments 100% dependent on fossil fuels to move out of fossil fuels, therefore uh, cutting off their own heads, said Manley, quote, the first job is to get NOCs on the agenda at COP26. Yes, they have not been focused on before, and we need to raise awareness. Close quote. Yes, we do. We need to raise awareness on uh, the folks uh, pumping two-thirds of the fossil fuels out of the ground and holding 90% of future reserves uh, while their economies are 100% dependent upon them. But I have to uh, wrap up this uh, rant because I am absolutely melting in the February heat stroke. Uh, and I've got to crank up my fossil fuel power gas sucking truck and get the air conditioner blasting on high. I notice my neighbor's air conditioner 
going full blast in February this morning. So get out there and enjoy your fossil fuels while you still can. Bye, guys.